Before we get to our guest, uh, our next guest this morning, I do want to remind you, we had Kelton Hatch in studio yesterday, and Kelton was uh, mentioning to everyone that what we've had is, uh, is still hunting season, still is uh, still on, and people obviously have to keep that in mind. But when we talk about hunting season, Kelton talked about all of that, that, that game you can have on your Thanksgiving table. Well, if you need someone to process it, we'd recommend High Desert Meat Processing, where they process one animal at a time. What you bring in is what you get back. Darren Van Horn has been in the business there over 30 years. Visit High Desert Meat Processing on Facebook and read reviews of other customers. You can give High Desert Meat Processing a call for all of your wild game and domestic needs, 734-9949. High Desert Meat does in-house smoking. Nothing gets shipped out. Specialty meats such as jerky, pepperoni, salami, summer sausage, kielbasa, breakfast sausage, brats. Oh, my gosh, the list goes on and on. And I drool every time I read it. USDA approved. Darren works closely with local beef growers and their programs to ensure quality meat. 734-9949. Uh, Steve Millington is joining us in studio, as he does on Tuesday mornings between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. Welcome back. Good morning. Most people, I think, who are longtime listeners understand Steve is the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. And uh, he, he talks about a, no- a variety of issues from local to national state. Uh, but the hottest issue right now in Idaho happens to be uh, we were just talking off air about how the Republicans, statewide Republicans, haven't been so unified probably in years on an issue as they suddenly are when it comes to the refugee resettlement program. But it's kind of got a lot of attention the last 72 <laughs> yes, hours. It sure has. And, 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 and rightly so. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, I, I listened to Newt Gingrich on, on a, on a uh, television show, and he said, for those who are Christian and truly trodden down and and forced into a refugee status by an oppressive uh, uh, government, we don't have a problem with those people coming to America. But we must figure out how to vet all these people and and, and make sure that credential-wise, they are of the kind of people who we could assimilate in the United States. There was a story, a Lincoln Drudge today, that said out of like the 3,000, in the latest wave that have come here, only 58 were Christians. And the United Nations says, well, that's because Christians aren't signing up. And I guess they're not signing up because they fear for their lives. If they do sign up, they have put the mark on themselves. They've painted a great big uh, bullseye on the middle of their back. This is a Christian person, and and therefore all of those bad things can happen to them. And and I suppose that, that uh, uh, like the uh, shooting down in uh, Oregon, uh, uh, two or three or four weeks ago, where the guy said, do you believe in in God? And if they said yes, he said, good, you're going to meet him. Boom. Well, you know, if that happened once, you'd stand there and you'd say, now, wait a minute, if I profess my belief in Christ and God and I identify as a a Christian believer, there's a good chance I'm going to get killed right here. Well, all of a sudden, you discover just exactly how committed you are to your beliefs. And, and many of them said, yes, I'm a Christian, and then he shot them just one after another. But but they didn't back down. And so these people in these foreign countries uh, understand that if they identify and recognize a Christian belief, they run the real serious risk of uh, being killed. Now, I've been here uh, 11 months, I guess. I've got to be honest, I've not yet seen a news release like the one I saw yesterday uh, with both Mike Simpson and Raul, Raul Labrador's name on it together, along with Jim Rich and Mike Crapo. And Mike Crapo, in fact, shared one of my Facebook posts about all of this on his Facebook page. Yeah. I noticed when I got up this morning, the, the unity, and, and I know sometimes they don't always agree on everything, plus the governor, uh, plus I think Brad Little was on board with this. Yes. And I think that, so you, you've got from top to bottom, um, it sets a tone, and I would imagine for a lot of the local people, look, I've been talking to some of the folks on the local level for months about this, and they they, they didn't know what to say. I mean, they were being very, I thought, overly cautious, uh, because I think with an election coming up, some were worried that there's enough of these people here now, they could turn an election. But this might make everyone else feel a little bit more bold, right? I, I think it will embolden a lot of people who, who will simply say, look, um, to just accept refugees on, on a wholesale basis is not an acceptable approach. And and I, I believe you mentioned even this morning, uh, there are plenty of refugees from throughout the world who who are, are not Muslim, Islamic, and, and we, we could welcome them. That's not a problem, you know. Come on in, assimilate into our culture and our society and our American system, and, and you'll do fine. 
But the problem we run into is those who would just as soon destroy America as, as embrace it. And, and that's who we've got to kind of make sure that we don't get crossways with. Now, I, I noticed uh, that almost 26, I think it's a total of 26, going on 27 governors have said, wait a minute, uh, this thing has got to be adjusted and changed. We don't want any of them unless you figure out how to properly screen and accept all these uh, refugees coming to this country. Otherwise, we don't want them. I think it was 26 by this morning. I think Governor Otter was the 15th because... Uh, by early yesterday morning, there were just about oh, five, and then yeah. it just throughout it exploded. the day. Yeah. yeah, it just exploded. And and this morning, uh, they were saying that there was 26 governors, and, and Otter was about right in the middle of that stream. And and there's the Democrat from New Hampshire. She was one of them. The governor of Montana is a Democrat, and he actually, he, he said, look, they've never brought any refugees here. So he said, I don't have any policy right now. But he hinted that if it happened, he would basically join these Republicans. Yes. And you may see that in South Dakota as well, and I think you'll see it in Utah and maybe even Nevada before it's done. I, I think you will, because this is such a— uh, and, and uh, the, the, the devastation in, in Paris is, is just unbelievable, and so far they've only got a half a dozen or so refu- I mean, uh, 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 terrorists in, involved in the process. So it doesn't take a whole busload of these guys to really rake, raise havoc in the community. It's just one or two at a time. Steve Millington is the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party, joining us in studio this morning, 20 minutes away from 9 o'clock. Bill Cowley is well on Top Story. It's 35 on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I'm more with the chairman coming up. Our guest in the studio, Steve Millington, is the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. He joins us on Tuesday mornings between 8 30 and 9 o'clock. Bill Colley with you as well on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And I was mentioning a few minutes ago High Desert Meat Processing because of something that Kelton Hatch mentioned yesterday. It's great to have a little variety on your table at Thanksgiving, and that includes wild game. High Desert Meat Processing processes one animal at a time, and what you bring, is, uh, bring in is what you're going to get back. Darren Van Horn, the owner of High Desert Meat Processing in Twin Falls, he's got more than three decades' experience. Visit High Desert Meat Processing on Facebook, and you can read reviews of other customers. High Desert Meat Processing, you can call them for all of your wild game and domestic needs, 734-9949. They do in-house smoking at at the shop. Nothing gets shipped out. Specialty meats, and we've been telling you, Polish dogs, hot dogs, kielbasa, breakfast sausage, pepperoni, salami, summer sausage. Did I mention the summer sausage already? I'll mention it twice because I love the stuff. USDA approved. Darren works closely with local beef growers and their programs to ensure quality meat. 734-9949. Steve Millington and I were talking off air about how uh, the French went in with two airstrikes versus 8,000 by the United States, and the French cleaned out the ISIS training center and the command center. So so quickly. And and, uh, it brings up an interesting point in in. 48 hours or less, the French government was able to identify specifically the command center and a training center and and prepare a strike and take them out, boom, boom. And we've been dancing sideways on this thing for who knows how long, 8,000 sorties over there, and we can't find them. We can't knock them out. We can't shut them down. Uh, You know, what do they do just having target practice on jackrabbits out in the middle of the desert? I mean, this is ridiculous. If you're going to fly 8,000 flights, make them worthwhile. And if all you're doing is having training exercises, leave the guys home. They can go out here on the gunnery range south of Mountain Home and do all the practice they want to have. You know? <laughs> Heavenly – oh, boy, this is ridiculous. Well, I was reading uh, – I think it's Joe Klein this morning in Time Magazine. I think they had a link at Real Clear Politics. And he was saying that – he said even the fact that you've got Republicans, he doesn't like Donald Trump. He doesn't like Ben Carson. And these guys may – one of them may well win the nomination. But he said – as poorly as the Democrats responded at their debate to all of this on Saturday night, plus the fact that this issue has really underscored that they're not very good at national security, that this is likely going to tip the election into another Republican landslide next year. Well, I would be fine with that. I would be fine with that. And I read an article uh, uh, yesterday by uh, Ann Coulter, and she said the uh, horrible tragedy in Paris, France, just got Donald Trump elected president. And, and I, I looked at that and I thought, whoa. Of course, she's not completely a, a Donald Trump fan, but 
the the fact that he is the guy who uh, has made a, a lot of traction out of this immigration policy. Now, all of a sudden, we look around, we say, well, here is one of the uncomfortable, sad results of a um, anything-goes immigration policy. And and he's the guy who says, we'll round them all up and we'll send them home. We'll get them out of here. You're going back and you'll have to start over. Well, there's a lot of people in the world today that are saying to the, themselves, you know, maybe that's not such a bad idea. Maybe that's not so bad. We keep They're, hearing it can't be done, but they, eight German saboteurs were rounded up back in World War II who just were dropped on a beach and they all spoke English. Yeah, and, and, and they looked and acted and assimilated comfortably into the American culture. And, and it was just by dumb luck that they were able to find out who they were and get them located and found. And, and uh, uh, there's, there's actually so many uh, uh, people of uh, Arab descent in in United States, they could blend in anywhere. We wouldn't know anything about them. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's not like they have uh, a great big huge uh, sign on their forehead that says uh, <laughs> I'm an ISIS terrorist. They don't, and and so it, it's a real difficult thing. Now, talking about Trump becoming president, we only have to have one more of these major incidences like this. Just one more, and and people are going to say enough already. Enough, and and the other two. The, one other thing that I thought about when I was reading Coulter's uh, uh, little news blob about uh, Trump, I thought to myself, wait a minute, Jeb Bush is pretty soft on immigration and wants a a uh, kind of a not exactly an amnesty program, but a pathway program, and so does uh, Marco Rubio. They both say, you know, we need to have this. It's got to happen, and and I wondered to myself, okay, if this is going to propel Trump forward. How much uh, damage did it do to both Rubio and Bush's campaigns because they have been real soft on immigration policies? So you look at the, the political landscape and and things like this help to define, not, not help, they in many ways totally define the outcome of these kinds of elections. And this is Trump speaking at a rally yesterday. Take a listen to this, and this is why I think that he's resonating with so many Republicans. We have people that are so bad, they are going to be gone so fast out of this country. And they're going back where they came from. If you had 25 people in there that had guns, okay, it would have been a totally different story, folks. There would have been the shootout at the OK Corral, right? And you would have had death, but it would have been their death. That's why he That's, is appealing. Uh, it, that you know, uh, in in times like this, we all get real uptight about you know what can we do? We need to fix this. How can we go about doing it? Now, uh, Saturday morning, uh, you know, I don't stay up all night and watch <laughs> news channels, uh, but Saturday morning when when this started to surface, and you said, "Oh my good night, look at this, what a wreck." One of the things that the news was reporting, and that, that's because the, the media in general really thinks that the problem with the whole world is that guns. If we could just eliminate guns, none of this would ever happen. Never mind the fact that the biggest carnage, the biggest human life destruction was caused by a couple of bombs strapped onto people's bodies, and they didn't really care that they would die. They're going to kill everybody else. No, the guns. Well, the French government went house to house trying to confiscate guns from people. And and I thought to myself, well, this is ridiculous. What they need to do is go on the television and say, everybody, uh, put your uh, uh, French flag on your person and your gun. And if people aren't singing the, the French national anthem with their flag waving, you might want to look at them and say, we're taking you to the police station so that you can figure this out. I can't but, sing the French national anthem. We learned it in school in French. I don't know what it means, but I can sing it. Uh-huh. You don't want to hear me sing it, but I can't. <laughs> well, okay, I'll take your word for it. Don't <laughs> sing it. But but it's interesting the kind of a political overtone that something like this is going to. And and when I read her article, I just thought to myself, one more incident, just one more, and 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 this whole political thing could just turn completely upside down. It's eight fifty one. Steve Millington is our guest in the studio. You're listening to Top Story with Bill Colley on News Radio thirteen ten KLIX as well as newsradio1310.com. It's 37 
Warming up a little quickly today, finally, after the last couple of days, it was a little chilly at times. I do want to remind you very quickly, too, as well. We've been telling you that you got to hear this program Monday through Friday because if you miss a little, you're going to miss a lot. So your hearing better be in great shape. We recommend you contact Dr. Christine Pickup, a doctor of audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology in Rupert. She's located at 1218 9th Street, unit number 2. You can call her at 208-312-0957 or go to mountharrisonaudiology.com. And did you know that the health of the inner ear is affected by your cardiovascular and kidney health? The inner ear is very sensitive to changes in your blood supply. If you've had recent heart problems or kidney problems, you should have your hearing checked right away. Uh, that's not a problem for Steve. He adjusted the uh, headphones when he first sat down this morning. Uh, somebody's been playing with the headphones because Kelton had to change them up yesterday, and then I saw you do that too. I, uh, I, I like them just a little bit uh, louder than too soft, yes. and, and so I always have to... <laughs> Check them out and make sure I'm going to be able to. Uh, and, and then, un- unfortunately, uh, when I when I dial them up a little louder, then I talk really loud. So that, <laughs> well, that's good. If people know you're here. Seven three six zero three hundred. Speaking of turning the election over to the Republicans, the other uh, the other story that's getting a lot of attention is what's going on on the college campuses. Oh boy, that you know happened to give Richard Nixon two elections back in the, and it gave Ronald Reagan two elections as governor in California. <laughs> It's interesting that that uh, we got a bunch of mamby pamby uh, crybabies. Uh, I want somebody to define for me, please. What is a safe space? How do we find a safe space? You know, you, once again, we go back to this idea that that personal values and personal uh, uh, responsibilities are no longer. Uh, a, a, a valid assumption in today's world. Someone has to provide that for me. In the good old days, and I predate you just a little bit. Ten, Bill. twelve years. <laughs> but, you know, uh, in, in the good old days, we took responsibility for ourselves. And if we needed a safe space, we created it or found it or made it a point to, even though the world was rancorous around us, we found that safe space and used it to our advantage. And, and at the same time, we may have to be working through an awful lot of really difficult uh, uh, circumstances, conditions, but we did it anyway. And now they demand that the whole world stop and give them everything they want. And, and these, the other thing that just blows my mind, these are college students. This is supposed to be a, colleges are supposed to be a training ground for professional careers. Now, how many of these people are you going to want in the medical suite, in the emergency room, in the operating room, how, how many of these people do you want in your student, your children's classroom? I mean, they just have a warped sense of reality. Maybe you think it's goofy. Where did these people come from? I said the only safe space most people likely get in life is after they're six feet under, and then if. The grave robbers come along. You don't even get that. Yeah. But, you know, most of us can at least, uh, the, the old adage, man's home is his castle, that's still uh, mostly correct. Uh, get out. You have to go into the big world and fight your battle and earn your way and, and get your paycheck. And and then mostly when we come to our home in the evening hours, that is our safe space. And we can make it such by having a good attitudes and good feelings and, and good conversations amongst those who live in that home. Um, gone. Gone are the days when we would sit down for an evening meal together and discuss and talk and what did you do in school? What how was the playground? Who, what about this friend? What about we don't do that anymore. I just think that, you know, we've got a lot of people, if you sit down and you were to listen to ABC News at night. They would tell you that all of these Republicans are mean spirited and wrong and being the thing is is that after a while, and it was the same effect with Ronald Reagan, they they kept people kept hearing that, but they kept listening to what Reagan was saying and it, it dawned on them, but I agree with him. Yeah, this makes sense to me. What he's saying makes sense to me. I, I can I can buy in on those things. That and more importantly, that's really what I want our country to be like. And and uh, you know, the the Democrats can keep and then the, the uh, drive by media. I think there's a fellow that comes on on Fox News that uses that term a lot. Uh, drive by media. Eventually, we're going to come to the point where that we're sick and tired of the drive by media, 
and and that's another reason uh, that this morning I uh, <clears throat> had to stop and get some some gas. We were just laughing with that. They know that on Tuesday mornings I'm on the show, and so you know what are we going to talk about today? And 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 I said, you know, one of the things that that Donald Trump did for uh, politics in general is that he hit some really specific uh, points that are very tender with many people. Immigration is one. The uh, the media. He he lamb blasted the media and still does all the time about their. Uh, uh, out of touch the uh, world and and people resonate with that they understand yeah, yeah that's what i want i'm sick and tired of the media not telling me what's really going on everything it, there's a difference between a journalist and an opinion editor and and most of today's media have not been able to figure out what that is they consider themselves to be the opinion editor and so they are always going to get quote their opinion, unquote. They don't report the news. They don't try to be journalists. They don't try to give you a uh, reasonable uh, discussion. It's just their way or the highway. And and Trump has really made a lot of progress with the immigration issue and with the media issue. And, and I think people are beginning to say, you know, he's right. We don't need to put up with that kind of stuff from the media. And he's also skipped the consultants who were telling him, don't do it. Uh, a lot of those guys are going to be out of work. That was interesting, too. You know, tell us who's advising you. Um, why? What difference does that make? Yeah. My mm. wife, right? And yeah. that's, uh, I think his answer is his wife and his kids. Yeah, nobody. We'll see you in about a week. Yep, sure enough. Will do. Steve Millington joining us in studio this morning on News Radio 1310 KLIX, News Radio 1310.com. Top story with Bill Colley. Fox News is coming up in one more hour of the program just ahead.